So let me repeat again. I'm opening this session with one straightforward, simple question. Why is Saudi Aramco always in need of WPRs at their project site? Over to you. Any one of you want to give reply or response on this? Why they need WPRs? You can uh, so also. maybe they to make them uh, their work in safe way in or in safe manner to avoid the accidents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so so they need a kind of a front leader, by the way, to support their business operations, to make them accident free or incident free, or maybe avoiding from near misses even proactively, rather than waiting for the accidents, right? Yes. Sir. So I always call WPRs are basically the front safety leaders. You know, the title, what I always give them, that is you are the front safety leader for that particular project, or maybe an activity, maybe a process, you know. There are technical processes, there are hazardous processes, non-hazardous, non-technical. There are processes in restricted areas or hazardous areas, or hazardous areas means could be confined spaces, you know. Mm -hmm. So proactively, you are a key front leader presenting safety systems and making sure along with Saudi Aramco that nothing will go wrong, inshallah, because proactively you are identifying all the hazards. Proactively you are identifying all sort of risks probably be available there. And then proactively you are making sure some sort of right corrective preventive actions are put in place and making sure nothing will go wrong. And here, Saudi Aramco, of course, you know, uh, appreciate a lot all the WPRs who have 0% injuries or kind of LTIs at their project site. And that is why sometimes I noted one WPR is uh, is taking maybe 40 real per hour. And there is another WPR is charging 90 real per hour. And why that project, why that contractor of Saudi Aramco is ready to pay 90 real even to a WPR? He's the same WPR, you know. Because, because he's the guy as a front safety leader and making sure, you know, zero LTI maybe for the last two years, maybe for the last three years. So because of your personal brand goodwill, you are getting that particular advantage, you know. So it's not always just to pass third party exam or pass a Ramco exam and then, you know, get the ID and now uh, celebrating that I'm the WPR. The purpose of WPR is to be the right person for the right job, actually, to be competent enough and making sure you are adding value and all the religions, what says, saving one life, saving the whole humanity. So this is one of the best noblest job in the world, I mean, kind of an Ibadah, right? That you are a part of a great journey to keep people safe and those people without any discrimination. It could be a Ramco guys, it could be your top management, could be the visitors or maybe your direct or indirect employees, you know. But you are working for all, by the way, as a, a front safety leader. Sometimes, you know, you are a diamond, but unfortunately, you don't realize that you are a diamond. And mostly WPRs, to be very honest, they don't realize how much they are important. But as a professional, I do understand because I'm in the market for the last 19 years. So I know what level of job you are performing. But yes, the criteria is either you are performing it honestly or you are just taking it as a formality, you know. And sometimes having excuses, maybe the top management is not committed. Maybe they want just to get the permit as quick as possible and don't do anything, Mr. WPR, just sit and sleep somewhere in your car, you know. But that is part of the top management mindset, not you actually. You as an individual still have to be committed and work on your personal branding and then see, inshallah, Allah's blessing, you know. That is the first single most... Uh, message not only to the WPRs, even all the safety professionals leading and working for 
uh, different companies, not only in Saudi Arabia, anywhere in the world. You know. The slogan, our slogan must be to save lives and making sure, you know, we are, not, we are playing a role like a role model, actually. If we don't respect safety regulations, no one else will be doing it, for sure, you know. Same way, if top management is not committed, who else could be taking it serious, right? So these are some ground realities and some sort of challenges we personally also face. But now the time is changing. And this, because of this COVID-19, because of this coronavirus, the things are drastically changed, you know, and now world realized how much, you know, this hazard recognition is important and why we truly have to work on safety management system, you know. Mostly companies, no contingency plan was there, no crisis management plan was there. Nobody was ready for that invisible enemy that this COVID-19 is going to destroy might be the whole world, you know, and distracting different projects. And now the whole world is in trouble. All economies, you know, I would say. But on the other side, the value of safety professionals boom up, I'm telling you. And that is why you became more important, by the way. So uh, for that reason, Saudi Aramco, of course, you know, need a person who will, along with the work permit issuer, will be supporting to their projects proactively. They will not allow anyone to start the, job, start the job or project until you sign the work permit along with Saudi Aramco issuer, you know. And that permit, to be very honest, I always talk, it's not like only an ordinary document. It's kind of a legal document. It's a legal document, my friends. It's not like just you signed and the job is done. If you truly realize how many ticks are there and what you have taken and ultimately you are signing with Saudi Aramco, maybe uh, you can realize in one minute and then see how much important points you have ticked and already signed up, you know, and that's your legal obligation. Saudi Aramco, you know, they are a global brand, we all know. And any global brand in the world, they don't want to compromise on three words. We call it safety, quality, and credibility. But safety comes first, you know. That's what they truly realize. Like if you are Saudi Aramco, you will never, you know, think even to have any casualties or any sort of incidents or accidents within your premises. Same like Saudi Aramco officials, and the top management, they are very much committed and trying hard not to see even a single accident at their side because that directly damage their goodwill. And goodwill gone means the business is over. So after all, like us, you know, Saudi Aramco is also doing business, right? But they want to do this business successfully, ethically, safely, without injuries, without LTIs, without paying a lot of direct or indirect costs, you know. And that is why they are relying on project to project on WPRs. Yes, there is. there are some manipulating strategies from the contractor side. They believe we are paying to WPR 40 real per hour. So their job is just immediately to get and sign the permit and the job is finished. But to be very honest, the moment you sign the permit, your job is started now. Because proactively, no doubt, you verified several things. Now, maintainability and sustainability would be a greatest challenge, right? So I hope uh, with that question, uh, we all could agree that the front leaders, the safety leaders as a WPR are the most important ingredient of Saudi Aramco operational excellence or business excellence you know, globally, not only in Saudi Arabia, anywhere in the world. And that is why proudly they are serving to the industry. Uh, otherwise, oil and gas itself is a red zone. It's a high hazardous industry. Already a tickling bomb, you know, <laughs> because it's oil, gas, compress, uh, you know, pipelines, confined spaces, plenty of uh, everywhere you are digging out, you are playing with nature. So a smallest mistake can create a terrible disaster. That is why they want people to realize that safety is the responsibility of everyone. But you are the most important front leader as a WPR. 
So I hope, inshallah, with this session, um, you will definitely find some time to rethink and make a better positive strategy as a professional, as a WPR. And to be very honest, a time will come, you will claim, no, no, Mr. Contractor, we will charge you 100 real per hour because I'm the honest WPR. I don't accept any project where you are telling me, ignore safety, ignore everything, just let the things happen, you know. A time will come, inshallah. And there are people, there are my students, you know, because I have more than, mashallah, six, 7,000 students only in WPRs. And there are plenty of WPRs, they are charging a lot because of the, their personal branding, you know. And same like I'm giving you motivation, inshallah. So work on yourself, have some personal development plan, do SWOT analysis. You know, we call it uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You can note down SWOT, S-W-O-T, get some time, go to YouTube, go to Google, have some research on it, and do your personal SWOT analysis and find out and prepare your personal development plan, you know. And I'm there to support you, inshallah. Now, uh, since this training is all about three important books, and these three books, I personally call them three procedures. You know, there are SOPs, standard operating procedures or kind of procedures, how a particular department or process or the activities you need to carry out or you need to perform in steps and sequence. So these three procedures basically are guiding us how are we going to make sure, you know, the recognition of hazard or identification of hazards? And as a WPR, your number one skill, what you required is to be the best hazards recognizer. <coughs> the more better deep, mashallah, observer, keen observer you are, like you are moving around and immediately at sight you found there are some electrical hazards, some mechanical hazards or chemical hazards or, uh, you know, ergonomic or physical or something like that immediately so you are the best person because the first thing as a doctor even you have to be capable how to diagnose the real uh, root cause of a sickness right same way you can't be a better safety leader until you have a strong skill we call it has a recognizer or has a recognition in and it's in seconds it's in minutes i mean sometimes it's take time to recognize the hazard but Ultimately, the physical, visible hazards, you must be capable, find out in seconds and minutes, you know. So, Ramco have given us basically three books. And let me repeat again, these are basically three SOPs or three procedures. But anyhow, the title one book is, uh, I call it HRNC, that means Hazard Recognition and Controls. Uh, and ultimately, each book have some specific objectives and these objectives you can call them targets or goals like learning goals i mean you are studying this book then make sure at least you achieve those objectives and targets in like number one objective is you must be capable to recognize hazards and controls but make sure correctly and don't expect any help from anyone. You have to be capable for this one. For what? Identify practices, hazards, and conditions that can lead to an incident. That is your number one prime goal. And that is, that is why the WPRs are so much important in because proactively you are identifying the hazards. The second is the list methods to recognize and control hazards. We are lucky, we are blessed we have Saudi Aramco guys because they have developed, they have even invested millions of dollars just to develop such kind of training materials for us. I mean, just imagine how much money they could have invested, you know, just for developing health and safety management system, you know. I mean, uh, as a professional, imagine if we all get a project from any company and they're going to tell, can you develop our health and safety management system? How much money are we going to charge them? You know? 
definitely we will say maybe 100,000 real, maybe 1 million real as per the size of their organization. And what we're going to do? Developing their policies, procedures, formats, and different kind of things, you know, to make sure the system in line with the international standards, or maybe we are benchmarking local legal standards as well. But ultimately goal is to make sure, you know, that we are developing a system which is creating some comprehensive benefits for the organization and making sure injuries free or accident free environment, you know. And that's the ultimate goal of a system. There was a big shouting, I hope you remember, when Saudi uh, government, they imposed 3,000 real, you know, fine, if you cross red signal. And everybody was, you know, I would say, uh, weeping, by the way, <laughs> not shouting, but weeping even. Why 3,000 real? But now they, everyone realized how much drastically the accident ratio gone down, especially at the signals, you know. So they realized based on their data, this, uh, you know, the human psyche is money driven. So why not, we, why not to put handsome fines? So nobody could dare even to cross that signal. And now, you know, what is happening? Yellow light is blinking and we all are stopping, even not waiting for the green signal, you know. So I hope you got the point. So <clears throat> that is why Saudi Aramco in this book, they have guided, you know, some uh, methods to recognize and control hazards. And let me repeat again, we are blessed to have Saudi Aramco because they are a best gardener for us after Allah's blessings, Alhamdulillah. Then also the purpose and the objective of this uh, book is recognize common Saudi Aramco workplace hazards and associated controls common workplace hazards and associated control you know saudi aramco have 80 plus years experience in oil and gas industry and i'm sure they have learned a lot and that is why they are sharing you know some of the common workplace hazards and putting their controls as per their experience also and by following different international standards maybe OSHA regulations, maybe some ISO standards they are benchmarking, maybe ASTM, maybe NFPA related to fire protection and plenty of other standards and local standards probably from, uh, you know, a PME, Presidency of Environmental Metrology, maybe some standards from Ministry of Health. And within Saudi Aramco, now they have divisions. I mean, a lot of divisions are there. I, I, I'm sure many of you already working for Saudi Aramco. So you you better understand what I'm talking about. Like they have FPD, Fire Protection Division. They have EPD, Environmental Protection Division. They have PID, Project Inspection Division. They also have QID, Quality Inspection Division. They have LPD, Loss Prevention Division. You know. And why they created such a domains, kind of ministries, I would say, to manage, because it's a huge organization, right? But ultimate goal of this book is to recognize hazards and put better controls in place, you know, proactively, not waiting for the accidents. This is the purpose of book number one. Three straightforward objectives are there. Now, if we talk about book number two, that is all about CSC, confined space entry. And again, this book also have four particular objectives, learning objectives or goals. Number one is define and identify a confined space. Define and identify a confined space. Sometimes I say in oil and gas, almost everything looks like a confined space because mostly the hazardous areas are there. But on the other side, second objective is state the requirements of the CSC program, like confined space entry program. The program, I call it master plan, you know. And without plan, even we should not think to do anything in our life even. Now the number three objective learning goal is define the requirements to plan and prepare a confined space entry. Define the requirements to plan, like how are we gonna prepare a plan? What are the requirements? And how we can 
have an effective confined space entry plan on board and plan to be very honest is a direction also that everybody have to follow if the plan is finalized approved you now everyone is bound to follow that particular plan you know to ensure their safety then number four objective is identify work hazards and control measures so these are four important learning objectives of confined space entry book number 2 i call it csc confined space entry okay now there is another book uh, number 3 lockout tag out or isolation hold tag and again four objectives are there number 1 is for this particular locker tagot program who will be responsible for what that means summarize the roles and responsibilities of employees and contractors involved in isolation lock and tag and second objective is recognize the equipment energy or systems that require the application of isolation locker tag out and also number 3 is identify the correct type of isolation methods to make equipment energy or system safe and the last objective is how to return equipment to a safe operational condition you know uh, whenever we have any repairing project or maintenance project or even any sort of uh, uh, shut down project in other words or start up project of any plant this lockout tag and isolation is one of the most important procedure we truly have to follow you know and we should never ignore even a single step of isolation even though mostly at confined spaces so isolation of confined spaces there are several methods but disconnection and blinding two methods are fully acceptable as per saudi aramco guidelines so we will discuss inshallah all three books in sequence and understand what these three books are ultimately guiding us you know but if i summarize all three books they are guiding us only three words hazards controls and precautions hazards controls and precautions precautions you can consider in administrative controls you know but under control of course engineering control administrative and pps all comes otherwise two important words hazards and their controls but proactively in advance before you start any of your project you know 